It's not like I can teach it to you. Once you catch the vision, you got it. Catch the Vision Podcast. Leadership tips, powerful lessons, and inspiration. That's not how this worked, and it's never worked this way. If you didn't get the concept, how in the world are you going to understand what I'm saying? Here's your hosts, John Trimble and Mike Cornwell. All right, good morning. This is uh, Catch the Vision. We're here live. 8 a.m. ish. You again. Sat- <laughs> me again. <laughs> well, it's time for me to say my favorite thing in the morning. What are we doing, John? What the heck? <laughs> what the heck are we doing anyway? Yeah, what are we doing? Well, we're, you know, we kind of reviewed last time. Yeah. Quite Paper a bit, yeah. actually. But um, I sent to you an outline of the essentials of leadership. And I realized afterwards, which just goes without saying, that the leadership we're talking about, that's a void, there's a void of it, and, and we're concerned about leadership, is connected to the big picture, the vision. If the leadership is not getting across the big picture, what's he getting across? Just his own little agenda? He has to have some compass, as we talked about, to where he's going. Yeah. You know, otherwise, what are we doing here? You know, people need to know that. And they need to know that he is focused on the vision and trying to impart that vision. Uh, that's essential for a leadership. Otherwise, I mean, you can be a leader at your car mechanic shop, but that's not really the leadership we're looking for here. That's nice. You're leading your shop of three, four mechanics, but that's not the same. That's not the same as what we're talking about because we're in a spiritual reality of what the vision is, like you like you shared with the guy you got from the, those videos and stuff, that vision is the overall big picture, and we may see this great big picture, and we go, we're going toward that. We're, we're trying to open eyes to that vision, like we said, catch the vision. And part of that, as I said, leadership, everything rises and falls on leadership. If, if the leadership is faulty and bad, then you're not going to get the vision. You're not going to be led to the right spot. And that's the importance of leadership that we've been talking about. And so I shared uh, with you uh, the uh, eight essentials of leadership, which I'll just read off real quick. It's, the, kind, of, it's kind of funny as a <clears throat> little random side note. Pretty much, uh, I think almost every single time we do this podcast, the same topics pop up later in the day. With other people and like, oh know, yeah, like a day or two later, um, and it's one of those kind of nice things that um, you know if you're you're tuning in and you listen to these topics, you'll probably run into that too. That you know something somebody says and like either later that day or like the next day, it's gonna be like, wow, we literally just talked about that, and you know, and or this is like the exact situation that they were just describing. It happens every single time for me. Yeah, you know, I I think <clears throat> a funny little uh, cartoon thing is. You remember the the Peanuts cartoon and Pig Pen, Pig Pen would come on the scene and he had this big cloud, dark cloud over him of rain and snow and he was all, con- big confusion cloud over him wherever, wherever Pig Pen went. Yeah. And I look at people like that. There's some people in, just in a cloud of confusion and oh, man. You know, they don't know where they're going. They don't know, they don't have a leader that says, hey, mm. you're in a cloud of confusion. You need to come out of that. But, you Here- know. Here's an example for that. So I'll keep sharing this because I've, I've told probably like everybody now. So I posted that video on YouTube of our trip down to Asheville. Yeah. And the, some people have started replying to it. And, you know, at least two people out of that think I'm a really bad person. And that what I had done was uh, it, it was representative of all the evil in the world. I was like, this is so ridiculous. So ridiculous. They're like, I'm not trying to, that cloud of confusion. <laughs> it is a cloud of confusion. And I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to like pat myself on the back and I'm not trying to, I was never attempting to claim any kind of virtuous or anything like that. But the kind of virtue signaling was so ridiculous. And and I, I didn't boil it down to the ultimate, the argument ultimately ended up with for them. And again, this is not rational. This is just, zom- I would say these are zombies that are out there and they're just propagating, <laughs> they're just propagating hate from their heart. Yeah. And um, they ultimately, what they were saying was, like the crux of their statements was, because there's somebody worse off than the person I'm helping, I should not be helping them. I should be helping someone else. And it's like, 
That's just utterly ridiculous. That's just a really, really, really unhealthy way to go through life. Uh, some people are geared for how do I find a negative in this and then how do I emphasize that negative? They're just geared that way. Yeah. Instead yeah, yeah. of seeing the positive and, hey, great and fantastic, that's interesting. No, uh, yeah, yeah, but, you know, you have... And I, and I, and I get it. I, I think um, one of the things that I think people are truly, truly missing, and I don't, I don't remember if it's in your list or, or not, but it's about the action orientation in life and in leadership in general, the, the importance of action. And the reason is, is like once you've now done a something, it, it's, it's a little more difficult or you're going to find a, a more nuanced way to critique something rather than just to try to dismiss it out hand because you're just, you just don't know enough. And so I, I think a lot of the people or the, these people that made these comments, they don't actually know that maybe they didn't watch the entire video. They don't understand what exactly took place. They don't understand that like, this is a personal friend of mine and the nature of what happened to his stuff. And if that was you or your family or well, anybody else, you'd have a completely different perspective on this. Yeah. And, but I think, um, any normal person, rational person who those people probably were like 18 years old or 20 or something. Uh, I, I'm hoping twenties, hopefully they're not 45 and they have no experience. Cause I have seen that. Yeah. And that is, that is some crazy <laughs> that, stuff. That's even worse. Yeah. Um, but, um, I, th I think if you do stuff, you, you gain a more mature view or something like that. And you're much more likely yeah. not to necessarily be too critical, but do I do some of the stuff that we actually do on this podcast? Cause we'll bring up and be critical of some different aspects, but it's, I would call it more nuanced. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things <laughs> a, a, a missionary told me was all over the world. He, he smuggled Bibles into China. He took my son with him, scared me. A little bit scared me, but my son, who is very perceptive and hearing impaired and sight impaired to some degree, yeah, he was able, because of the way he's taught to read lips and to read people, he was able to see where to go with the Bibles that this missionary couldn't see. He was normal, natural, etc. But the thing of it is, is that the um, little adjustment of the light in here. Yeah, I see that light in your eyes. Yeah is that there's this uh, place over here that we can smuggle the Bibles easier and better and less observed than over here. And he would tell the missionary that and they would go there and it would work out a lot better because of because he had a perception. He huh. could perceive what would be easier and who would let us go through. He has a unique perception in that way. In fact, he's basically sees through a straw. That's all he sees. And yet he's building an addition on his house. And you have to give him credit for, he, he can perceive what's going to go on. He has people help him to some degree. But yeah. but what I'm saying is there are people out there that don't perceive anything. They just don't really, wow. they don't really get, or they don't perceive, or I like to say it this way. If you take a, a, a circle and say in, in this circle, is all empirical knowledge that there is, period. Yeah. All empirical knowledge there is. What percentage would you say you have? And nobody smart and smart would say 10% or even wow. 1%. Oh my goodness. I mean, we're lucky if we get a fraction of a percent, right? Of all empirical knowledge. And yet these people have very small fraction of that knowledge. Well, we'll give we'll be conservative. We'll give them one percent. They have one percent, but there's ninety nine percent of the empirical knowledge they don't have. And then they tell me there's no God. They tell me there's uh, no this. Yeah. They tell me there's this. They're speaking from such a limited view. Well, that's that is kind of what the um, we were talking about this kind of briefly yesterday. That um, the evidence of right. So the the yeah. the fact that there there's evidence for different stuff out there, and um, I think we were talking about. Um, we could have been talking about floodwaters because that would definitely be an example of it. No, we were. T I was telling. I was. T I was telling Tyler about um, talking about permaculture patterns and pattern recognition, and it's a really, it's actually a really important aspect in permaculture that everybody doesn't do because they're just stuck on like the concrete, like do the, you know, I want a garden. Okay, but that's not permaculture. Permaculture is something bigger. It's about a design. Yeah. yeah. And one of, the, one of the most important chapters, like in the, in the founding book, is on pattern recognition. And so going out and looking 
and you can tell something about the universe, about what energies had flown through there and the characteristics of those energies based on the signature that is left. And so you see on the top of a mountain, you'll see trees that are like leaning over, you know, they'll go up and kind of straight back. And that's because there's a prevailing wind that comes across there. And yeah. so you're seeing the results of those energies. You're seeing the pattern. Yeah. And, you... and so there's definitely a many apologists out there that uh, basically bring up that by the virtue that the, the universe is ordered and the only thing that's, that comes from uh, that, uh, um, the only thing that produces order is a mind, there must be an intelligent mind. You know, that, that's a, that's a pretty, it's a pretty compelling argument. Yeah. Um, but the reality is, is if you don't have any experience in any of these various things, you are just going to spit out a bunch of arguments. And after listening to an ap apologist long enough and like people trying to, I don't know, counter or share their very same opinion as everybody else, they, they think they've got like some unique, like, oh, I'm a thinker and I've spent a lot of time thinking about, no, you haven't. You haven't spent any time because you haven't even read source material. That to me is like the biggest problem. Yep. If you're gonna be, if you're gonna critique the Bible, pick up the Bible, read the Bible, yep. like actually read the Bible, then come with a critique. And there's plenty of critiques you might have, but it ain't gonna be none of the ones that everybody else gives. It just isn't. Well, one one of the things that I've said to you, and it's I I don't know what else I read. I mean, I read books, but I can run through a book. And I'm a very fast reader, so I can run through and get the book and the gist and all that stuff. It's oh, okay. very, very fast. But I get more per square inch out of the Bible than I get per square mile out of a book because the oh, book man. is commentary and all over the area. Yeah, yeah. When I get a lot of stuff per square inch, just the Bible. So sometimes you have to narrow your training or learning or research down to the basic facts first. Then you can venture out i mean yeah if I, would you're agree, do, I would agree with this yeah yeah if you're doing apologetics and you don't know what you're talking about you don't know the bible I, I, how does that work you know it, it's not working so or even doing commentary you you you're talking about something you didn't, i didn't read that book yet but i want to talk about it come on yeah yeah come on you know, i agree so, that's actually a really good argument no one would have no one normally would accept that as a reasonable argument plus there are people out there you talk about order and the, the order of universe that god has made an order uh uh, they call it the supreme beings made the order of the unit. He's the creator. I agree with that. But the only ones that can go against that order and think there isn't one and fight it is humans. Well, <clears throat> you don't see a cat out there going, hey, we no. don't agree with it. Hey, so, uh, it, and, and, and that would actually be further evidence. So the, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 um, How'd you, get you know, I was, I was, I was telling my wife, uh, we were talking about this, that um, there is nothing at all, not even close on planet Earth that builds, that like actually creates. Yeah. There's nothing that does art. There's nothing that does um, some sort of forward thinking that then invents something. I mean, the closest you're gonna get is like ants, but they build the same thing every time. They build tunnels and, and yeah. stuff like that. But other than that, they don't, they don't create anything. And we're the only ones, as in there's no other so yep. that itself is actually a very interesting, it's such a anomaly in the wrinkle of normal thinking that you can't, you just literally can't ignore it if you have yeah. any kind of uh, honesty and integrity. Honesty, integrity, intelligence, yeah, <laughs> I agree with that. And so, uh, you know, getting back to this, yep. uh, we, 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 I think you the same, we endeavor to share these aspects these attributes of leadership and help catch the vision because I this is where I'm at. It's because if you have the order, we don't call it order, of vision, the actual aspects of vision and leadership, if you have that, you'll come to a realization of, of why we're about what we're about. Why yeah. we're about what we're about. It's very important because otherwise you're like a ship tossed with every wind it flies through and you got no real bearing, you know? Well, you know, it's funny you say that. That That is probably a really good uh, reason for um, or a um, what fixing the leadership void would do is that it would start to put people and people around them on a much steadier footing. No question. Yeah. 
No question. Yeah, that, I mean, I, yeah, that no makes question. sense. No question. And the leader, leaders mm. have to be committed to it. You know, uh, a whimsical, flippant leader that really doesn't have, yeah, yeah. He's going to, the results is going to show up how bad he is. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I see, I can see people because I consider myself rather whimsical, although I think I get more uh, mal credit towards that. But when I see somebody who is way more floppy than me, it, is, it, re it really pops out. Yeah, and it's, it's difficult to be a leader with, a, if you had, somebody said it's like herding cats. Uh, yeah. Some people, if you have, 12, 20 people that aren't grounded to some degree and you give them grounded, solid truth and they're all over the place, you have to wonder, what am I going to do with these people? And so it takes a commitment of leaders to say, I've got to help them see the vision. Remember, we, I got to yes. share, I gotta, they got to hear it. And when they see it, then I'm all set. Have you seen my... Radio video. It really was not geared towards you, but did you did you see it? It was like two or three days ago. I saw the one you're standing up here. Yeah, yeah. I I didn't get to all of it. But yeah, I mean, I, I imagine not. It's not really. I put like on it. I think. Okay, I, it really was not uh, geared geared for you. But that was kind of the point of that video. The point of that video was there's like a bunch of people who they're they're like they want to do the thing. They're they're interested in the thing, but. They're starting to go off like that. They're, they're doing things that are like little micro half measures. They're doing things where they clearly don't understand the nature and the scope and the complexity of what would actually need to be done yeah. to build these. And I think a lot of them, you know. Well, that's uh, a challenge. That's a big challenge for leaders. Yeah. And so what I decided to do was like, you know what? I'm going to, I was going to work on it. Um, that that vision statement for that project anyways. And then I was like, you know what? I might as well just work on the board and then just broadcast it. And that way, it's like, hey, now it's like open and transparent. Anybody wonders how I came up with this? Well, you can could, you could just go watch it. Mm -hmm. And that was the whole point of it was to get people on the same page of like, look, this is not about getting people radios because that literally is not going to work. Literally, it's not going to work. You can get everybody in this county and train them, and for people who don't know what I'm talking about, uh, there's basically, you know, we had this disaster here. Communications was the worst thing. Uh, it was like the, the first thing that, that people needed and didn't have, and they had no way to communicate out, say they're okay or they need help or anything like that. And so we're trying to solve that for our county where anybody would be able to call out and get to, you know, get out there. And the way that people think to solve this is like, oh, I'm going to go get a radio and go get become a ham radio. Well, okay, if you don't have power, your ham radio ain't going to work <laughs> because it's grid tied. And yeah, you can run a generator to go do that, but that's about like you individually. How does that help everybody in the county? It, like just, they, they just, they don't, they never, they didn't really stop to think about it. They're like instantaneous jump to a solution. And as a, as a person who builds technology for a living, I've seen that a hundred million times, right? It's the same thing as those apologetics arguments. Oh, that's the same. That's the same move everybody does. He does he's <coughs> n never been involved in the activity of building technology, <coughs> and so um, <coughs> I Excuse knew me. for people to start working in the direction that they needed to go, they needed to know a little bit more about this problem set, and one of which because they need to know the background. What is what is the actual true facts that happen? Because we have to we have to consider all of these when we build a solution, not just one little one. And I and my last comment on this was just just thinking that even if you got every single person in this county a radio and then every single person trained them on how to use that radio, it still would fail. And the reason why it would <clears throat> fail is because no one uses radios. And that's a pretty important, that's a very important thing to understand. Does, <coughs> does your wife use a radio? <laughs> no, but she's like, she's like the tar the perfect target audience who might want to reach her kids, right? Because she had no communications with her kids mm -hmm. because they're in a no, they're not even in a cell phone area right now. So you'd have to talk to them through the internet and so on. And so that all, all that stuff was down. So how are you getting a hold of them? So it's like, even if she knew how to use a radio, that radio ain't going to reach there. So there's all of those kinds of problems. And I think, I believe when you get other people 
on board so that they understand the same sets of facts and you go this is really the direction <coughs> we need to go here's the it's the vaguey direction like this is the 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 perfect end state we're not going to get to that perfect end state but we're going to try to get there they'll move in the right direction yep well getting back to a a, a catch the vision thing that we've been going after um we have out there in front of us the very same thing. People aren't using the Bible, aren't using the Christian principles. Uh, I have got old paradigm that isn't working, that keeps them, go to church for an hour, but that's it. That's the other six and a half, seven days. You know, it's 6.9 days yeah. of, uh, of uh, nothing, uh, but then one hour for uh, church. We, they lose, we, we got to get them back to something solid in order to get across what we're talking about, because I feel like I need some AI running that yeah. says when it says when you say church, we say church, it, it pops up on the screen and then says TM. Yeah, just to be just real clear what we're talking about with church, church yeah. TM. Yeah, we're not talking about <laughs> church like you're talking about, or the paradigm that we all live under, whether it's Baptist or Methodist or whatever it is. That paradigm of one guy, pastor, preaching in an hour, and everybody listens, and then they go home, maybe a few songs, and that's about it. Really, that's about it. And yeah. and so the ones that are reading the Bible and saying, I want more, are the good people to me because they at least they're looking and saying, we need more than this. This is not really filling the need. Well, they're so in, they get they're together. They're in search of, yep. Yeah. And they get together. Yeah, they yeah. get together, and then they sh share amongst themselves, and they say, hey, this is better and and so that's really what I'm talking about. So yes, we need leadership, and we can talk about centers of leadership. But um, whoever's listening, I'm sure you're suffering from two things: either you're suffering and you don't know it, and you're okay with the paradigm, <laughs> or you're suffering because you're not okay with the paradigm, and you know there's more, and you want to get out there and get more. And that's what we're talking about. There's that's what I'm talking about. There's more out there than we've enjoyed so far. And we can have that more together. We can't, again, we got back to, we're talking about this is a body, this is an organism, not an organization. The organization is broken. It's, it doesn't work. You can have some organization for the babies for a little while, help them kind of oh, yeah. get, get growed up till they start walking. When they start walking, you got to have body. You got to have organism. You got you to have... Uh, an organic thing that's happening that connects with them and and the the big picture and with other one another by that whichever joint supply you you have to have this and the, and the greatest example I can see of is is the body because it's funny how we're trying to do an organization when we've got the actual answer right here in a body we just don't want to do it that way we want to be in control or have an agenda and and people get comfortable with one paradigm and they say that's fine that'll, that'll be yeah and well, so because they've got that, other things they well, want to do could, that could be okay because you want your hand to be in the paradigm that it's a hand well when it has to do with hand yeah yeah when when in other in other words what i'm saying here is um i'm with you i think it's actually a really good metaphor uh but you you have to align people to the point where they are if they're a hand they need to get in the hand position and because you, you can see this, like you can observe observe this with, with, I'll say normal people. And that, depending on who you are, that's either a, a very nice compliment. Like my parents, when I say that they're normal people, they're like, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> For me, that, that would be the most insulting thing you could possibly say. Yeah. But um, like, a, like a, normal, a normal person, they- You're not normal, brother. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> the, they, what, they what they normally want is they just want to kind of like live their life. They want it. They want to have yeah. that habit. They want that routine. And if it's going to church five days a week or it's one day a week, that they, they, they don't really care. But they want that habit. They want they want society and and all these various things to be like kind of supportive and it all to be this kind of structure that works. Yeah. Now, but we know based on just any kind of observation that hands or feet and you know the freaking toe is or teeth and. It's all over the place. And so getting them into position so that they can continue to exist and do that autopilot that they're doing, it would be a productive autopilot, yeah. which, you know, it's not the best example because the reality is, is with all humans, 
maybe this is a sin a sin comment no one can stay a hand forever they want to start they start drifting out and then yep. they got to be brought to being a hand again yeah well you know it's interesting we just went through a disaster here and everything that i read or hear about in the news they're saying we're trying to get back to normal yeah and the reason why they're saying that <laughs> perfect example right? is they're in a disaster. They're in a mix-up. It's yeah. all disoriented. They're all upset. And so they try to get back. No. So I was talking to my wife the other day, and she was worried about something. And I said to her, listen, and I say this to other people. I've said this in counseling. What is the worst case scenario that you're concerned about in the situation you're in? And they would tell me, oh, the worst case scenario is the tornado would come right down, take my house right out, and we'd all die. I said, okay, that's your worst case scenario? Yes, that would be the worst case scenario. Okay, from, work from there. <laughs> Let's see where you're really at and work from, because that would be like on the scale 2,000, but we're really on 10. We need to go to 11. And you're trying to get out of the worst case scenario. You're not even there. You're oh, more yeah. concerned about the disaster than you are about where you're at. And you might just need to jump to 11. You know, people think that the, the next level is a huge step. It's not. The next level is the next level. It's just you go to the next level, then you do the next level, then point. you do the next level. And that's what the Bible means by line upon line. You don't jump over to here to be a mature, uh, perfect uh, example of a Christian fr from birth. Oh, I uh, see. Neither does humans. And I say to you, look, at what's the worst case scenario? And don't you want to get back to normal when you get that worst case scenario? Of course you do. We want to get back to normal. So you need to decide where you're at in the scale because, or, you know, in reality. Because it's, people get so freaked out about disaster and the worst case scenario, they can't function in the level they're at. They, you, know, you just need to go to the store and get milk. Oh, <laughs> you're freaking out. Just, let's just get milk and live one day at a time. And so... People really don't like that because they're worried and fear about, they fear, fear is a horrible thing because, oh, man. and worry about disaster and the worst case scenario, and they're not there. They have to, when you said, you just told me the worst case scenario, you're not even close to that. Well, the, you know, <clears throat> at the at the, the risk <laughs> of, you know, alienating myself, um, <laughs> I, op I operate on a very different understanding of reality. I, under, I operate under the reality that everything is normal like there's no concept there's no reality like you have no right to a particular reality you have no right to it so the thought that for example all the roads are there and there's no troubles you have no right to that that's that is an effort to make that the case and there's a lot of people who are trying to make the situation look like it used to look but guess what even if they fix all the roads and all this kind of stuff, it still won't look that way no, for just certain kinds, certain kinds of reasons. Thank God for disasters, then, because I, I would agree. It's it's yeah, it wakes I you up to where you really I are would, at. I would absolutely agree because it yes, it does. And to me, I've been very I'm always bothered by this when people say, and there's people we know that I have replied to their Facebook and said, "This is the stupidest <laughs> crap I've ever seen." Like, like <laughs> you don't understand. This flood is, this was the biggest flood since Noah. You are ridiculous. All you have to do is just go look around out here and see all these flat points. And guess what? That's where water has been. If it's flat, that's because water has been there. And people are like all shocked about this stuff. And it's like, dude, <laughs> wake up. Like, wake well, up. Well, for me, in this situation where we're talking about catch a vision, the worst case scenario is the scripture that says in the Old Testament, and oh, every man, man did what was right in their own eyes, and they went off and did whatever, and no, there's no recorded history. By the way, listen to this very carefully. This is really powerful. There's no recorded history of those people that went off and did whatever was right in their eyes. Nobody writes down, well, what that guy did and what that guy did, because it, it's meaningless. It's off doing your own thing. Yeah. And the worst case scenario is you have no vision. You have no compass. You have no big picture. And so you're out there doing whatever, and pretty soon you're going to be forgotten. Actually, there's a scripture that talks about that. You're going to, you'll be forgotten. Because over to, you, you, mean the, you, you went nowhere. You, you actually became nothing of nothing. And so the worst-case scenario, which we're not there, but sometimes I wonder if we're there because 
in this world, there is so much of the opposite of scriptural and training and vision and teaching that you begin to wonder, is there any is there anybody out there that's got this together? And there are, and there actually are, and we have to find, find them. In fact, you and I were talking about this one guy that might have come and share his view yeah, of vision. Yeah, yeah. They're out there. It's just that we get in our own little world. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, yeah. You know, and now we're saying, well, this is this is it. This is it. Please. Well, so you don't I, know enough. When I talk about this and, you know, I need to, what I really need to do is actually try to write like maybe a mini book or, or some articles on this to like clarify my thinking. But um, I, I say this regularly that people are living under the paradigm of empire, that they are a citizen of an empire and they need to pay. It's like the the election stuff. I don't pay a lot of attention to it. I pay a little bit. I'm, you know, I'm seeing kind of what's going on or whatever, but the way people talk like in, in it, it, and it's weird to see for me to see, because I've, I've like, this place is kind of interesting. A lot of people moved here who are not rule type of people and the rule type of people, they're not on the, whatever's happening outside of those mountains. Like not really, they're doing their day to day, and so they're, they've got their own problems. <laughs> we'll definitely say that, <laughs> that they're not trying to get involved in like some, you know, Ukraine or what, what, I don't know. I don't know what they got going on over there. Um, and I think it's a very healthy view, me personally, but I've noticed a lot of people move from like their cities or the suburbs and they come here and they're bringing that same thinking, like how they think here. And this is a, a thing I was kind of talking about this earlier. It's, it's not going to make sense because I didn't, I didn't tell you the full context. But the way somebody comes here and thinks about a business is totally inappropriate. But they are used to living out in the empire where there's unlimited resources, there's so many people, and when you come to a place like this, if it's not an owner-operated business, um, it probably ain't gonna work. Probably ain't gonna work. And so there's people here who are, you know, they're trying to buy up a business, change the paradigm, and then like go, oh, uh, you know, I'm the owner and you're the worker and I'm gonna get, you know, most of the, this is what people are saying. I don't know if this is actually happening, but uh, yeah, I'm going to get two thirds and then you're going to get one third. Yeah, but he does all the work. Like that kind of like, whether people like it or not, in a more rural situation, you have much more communist-like reality. Communist being um, a, a more organic form, and I'm not saying communism, I have no support for communism as like a political thing, but from like the what would be the ideals of a commune that people who do work, it's more of a meritocracy. That's like the people who do the work actually get, they bring home the bacon and people who do the least, they don't. And so in out there in empire, you can get very crafty and very cunning and go and go, hey, I've got these systems and I've got these computers in place that all, I can hire the cheapest imaginable person, which would be like illegal labor to, or you know, uh, illegal immigrants coming in and filling those roles. There, that's how that's how they're making their money, and then they make a killing. You can't do that kind of stuff here. It just doesn't work. There's not enough people. They don't have that. They don't even have that mindset. People are here for a reason, mm -hmm. and so it always goes back to like, where are you? What what are you? What like what are you leading? Where are you going? And that you cannot. This is why you have to understand leadership because you cannot get away from these facts. Yeah, and I think I think you know you're in the, you're talking about the world's view and the world. Yes, thing. the world's view. Yeah, and I I get that, and that's probably probably one of the worst things that's permeated the church thinking, as far as I'm talking about church who are a people, the people of God kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. Is the world's view has infiltrated, and they're trying to do in the church what they do in the world. Like, yeah, I agree. I'm sorry, it doesn't work. I mean. It, to some degree, in some places, people can live with it. They're okay with it, but I'm not. Some people think, for example, that government should be run like a business. Those people should be nowhere near government. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. Like, you have no idea what government is, what its role is, if you think it's a freaking business. And I get it that people, like, they want to make the government fiscally sound and then go, like, well, a business would never run. I totally agree. But guess what? It ain't a business. It's a completely different paradigm. And there's no customers. Like, there's no customers with the government. You can't even think like that because I would argue, say, that's almost how they think now. 
because they go like, oh, our people, our customers, our audience, yeah. dude, you are in charge. You are you are governing all. You can't you can't think like that. It's an interesting. It's very interesting. You said that because I thought about a scripture that a guy opened up to me, and then I began to do study on it. There's a scripture back in Genesis that says, uh, talking about the husband okay. uh, of the wife, saying, and the comment is, and he shall rule over thee, or rule over you. And the word rule there, this is really big. If you get a hold of this, it will really help you. Is not the word rule like a ruler. Okay. E giving edicts and directing and telling you what you're going to do. That word is not that, that is not the word. The word is govern in order to bless. That's what it means. So that word rule really should say, and he shall govern in order to bless you. So he will make decisions mm. in order for you to be in a blessed state. He will, he will have some kind of compass and make decisions in order for you to be blessed. He's not going to just willy-nilly do it because he wants you to be blessed. So he's got to find a direction that will cause his wife to be blessed. Govern in order to bless. And so that's what a lot of people don't get here. Yes. We don't have rulership to rule well, I don't know what the number one difference between a business? It just came to me. I, I, I literally <laughs> can't stand these, these things. Um you want to know what the difference between a business and a government is? One is one is optional and the other one is not. One is voluntary and the other one is not. Mm -hmm. And when you have that paradigm, you can't play by the same rules. You can't even talk the same. You can't even think the same. You actually have to be way more astute in morality, way more astute in things like uh, a humbleness and carefulness and leadership stuff that we talked about too. you absolutely do yeah. you 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 cannot you cannot think that a government should be like a business you yeah. cannot yeah no and so uh when you're talking about leaders in government uh, and being government you know they th you have to have leadership there's no question in my you, mind you now have to. you can have poor leadership and all that kind of stuff there's a lot of that but it's important. In fact, if I can just read these, read these. You, uh, John, you can always have poor leadership. That's the natural state of things. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. That's, unfortunately. Yeah, well, let me ahead. just read yeah, the, the eight essentials of leadership, leadership attributes is vision, purpose, identity, conviction, a value system, passion, perseverance, and instigating solutions to problems or for progress. If you have them, you have somebody who is on his way somewhere that he knows where he's going. Not on his way somewhere, on his way where he knows where he's going. And so if, oh. if, gover if leadership knows where it's going, it has these essentials, and it allows them to keep on keeping on, and other people feel like, hey, I'm in the right boat. I'm in a good boat going the right direction. Even if the winds come... The leader knows whether to zigzag the, the sailboat to get to where he's got to go because uh, even though winds come, winds contrary winds can help you steer toward your goal if you know how to work up work the sailboat if you understand that kind of thing. So, so yeah, yeah, you do like a zigzag. You have to yeah. let that wind just keep moving, and you'll eventually get to where you got to go. And I've done it many times. So, I think somehow we're in. A time, like you said, where poor leadership and no leadership is happening like in a natural way. But it really shouldn't be that way. Even your nature thing argument. Nature's not without leadership or without order. And, and it says that God is a God of order. He's got all kinds of order out there. But we know, we know. So I got, I got to stop you. Without a vision, the people perish. That's right. right? So the, the reality is, is. You can see everywhere that people do not have a vision. And I don't personally believe... And that's why they're perishing. I don't ascribe to belief that that is intentional. I believe that that is the natural state of things. And I believe that this is... The, the call to leadership comes from the natural... The, I don't want to say like the natural world. I'm the natural not, mess. But just, just the, nat the natural nature of things that somebody has to come up and somebody has to do something. Yeah, it's not going to just happen automatically. It's, it's that last one you said there. Can you say that one again? Yeah. Is, is, um... I actually like the way you worded it, too. I actually caught the exact words to it. The last Instigating one. solutions to problems 
Yes. Or for progress. So, in other words, in instigating, that's like causing problems. That's causing. That's causing. You have to instigate. Yes, instigate. They don't know even how to shut. No, and on on top of that, the disaster that came here to this area (laughs) woke us up. Yes, it instigated us to do stuff. Well, I normal. just I love the term instigate because that's the actual experience you have when you go and you're trying to make a change because you get resistance and fighting. Well, there's another <laughs> another person put it a different way to encourage, and I went, mm, no, you got to instigate because yeah. sometimes you know people. Well, if it doesn't encourage me, I don't want a part of it. Well, why did you do this? Well, he instigated me. Well, I like that guy better who instigated you to do the right thing. Yeah. And somebody's just encouraging you. You're encouraging you to do what? To be no, where? Encur- yeah. Encouragement comes when you're already on the path. And already maybe maybe it. there's a little bit of shakiness. And then you reaffirm. Already on This it. is different phases. And the first phase is the bad one. <laughs> it, and I say bad in the sense of like the feeling like it's never positive. Again, our disaster. <laughs> it's never positive. Our disaster said... Which is positive, although they call it a negative. Yes. Yeah, but I, it yeah, caused I'm us to do things to get back to normal. It caused us, instigated us, to go and and straighten things out and fix people up and fix roads and fix stuff. That disaster did well, more. It, it it also it it changed people's hearts. It yep. changed people's schedules, yep. and it re it made people reevaluate their priorities. You remember the nine eleven. Mm-hmm. The whole city came together, and everywhere on every block was pray. Pray for America. Pray for New York City. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You couldn't do that before. Oh, pray, hey, you got no business saying pray because we're True. just. Yeah. But boy, we all came together when it was 9-11. So, you know, some of these things that are horrible happen to get us to wake up and say, hey, we got to well, do Well, the experience of horrible, this is, again, this is, um, I, I wrote something, uh, I write it or maybe I texted somebody that basically the gist is like a, a disaster. As long as it's a disaster to you, it's a disaster. You know, the experience that like when it's your own personal life that has been kind of shredded up, you feel that even if the, the greater environment doesn't and much more so than if you were un, unimpacted by any, we're talking about just anything in life. Like I've heard, for example, uh, it's um, no one cares if it's a recession unless you lose your job and then it's a recession. Yeah. You know, it's not a recession unless you lose your job. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not a depression unless you're in, you know, that extremely uh, destitute. Yeah. yeah. That, that state. But on the same token, um, the, where is I going with this? The, I don't know, but I know that one very, very well. And, that is the one that I've been trying to um, come to peace with. That the the feel, yeah, the, I, I know where I'm trying to tie this now. I don't know how I'm going to tie it, <laughs> but that feeling like you're saying like instigating. And so a lot of people don't want to rock the boat because of various things. They don't want to like actually ruin the relationship. And the feeling of doing that, it kind of feels like you are when you're pushing the person so much. So like yesterday, I had this conversation about like how to, um, I came in, I came into the house and the, our fire in our wood stove was out, like just totally out. And then maybe there was one or two like little embers left that, you know, and I was trying to get some logs in there to to go and get it started. And I was like, why all of you guys who are farting around, not getting this, like keeping this wood stove started. And then I'm told, well, it's 70 degrees outside. Why would we do that? I'm like, because you would have to start the fire all over again, cold, and you have to use all these precious materials, which the starting materials, everybody thinks like, oh, they're just a bunch of sticks. That is the hardest thing to get because oftentimes those sticks are too wet. Like you can't just go and cut the wood. So we have giant piles of wood that we've been storing for years. We don't have giant piles of starting material. So you have to go do that and it takes time and then the wood stove has to reheat and all this kind of stuff. That's one aspect of like the tactical na- nature of it. But I had to tell them like, look, this isn't about that. This is about having a habit and a behavior to keep a fire going because if we needed to actually make that fire going, there'd be problems. This would be unacceptable. Well, I like your metaf. That's a good uh, picture there because there are a lot of us that don't keep 
the fire is going. That don't keep. Yes. And and in my life, I mean, I haven't like an automatic pilot that if things get low, it comes on strong. Yes. And that kind of thing, uh, internally, I got from my search in the Word of God. I, there's no other way for me to say it. Okay. And once I got a hold of that, like you said, once you see the vision, once you get the revelation, that thing doesn't go away. You can't unsee it. You can't say, I don't see that anymore. I, I think that these people that walk away from God, walk away from the Lord, are have a deep rebellious heart that will ignore what they already know and go against it on purpose because they're angry. Yes. They're angry. And I call, like, atheists, I think they're mostly anti-theists. They're not atheists. They're, they know there's God. They're just mad at them. And so, uh, but you can't allow yourself to get into that state. We all like sheep or go astray. We all like sheep want to go some other, other yeah. way. But we've got to keep that home fire burning like we used to call that song. Uh, keep the home fires burning. you got you got to keep that ember glowing. Breathe on it a little bit. Maybe it may be low, but we've got to keep it rolling keep because it? otherwise the work to get that going again is a lot more involved oh my than just uh, we had a flaming fire and throw a log in. That's a lot. That's easy. So that easy. I, you know, this is the these are the kinds of things that kind of light me to to get to get going. Is the that anecdote is a is a microcosm of a way bigger problem. So I know you you normally bring up yeah uh, kind of the, the the lack of Christ and uh, grounded biblical understandings and things like that. And I kind of come from a, a kind of slightly different place, but th they both interlink. But the um, I see that, I go like, look, that world out there, I try, I try to tell people this because I, I, I'm very astute with understanding how people think. They out there are expecting us in here to have our crap together and the ability to be able to survive the apocalypse. And we can't <laughs> even keep a daggum fire because... Uh, and and what it came down to, because this person who is resisting me on this, I was like, okay, now you own this problem because you're so motivated about it. You you clearly don't know nothing about this. You clearly know nothing about this, and you're only interested in the right now millisecond, which is exactly how you get into problems in the first place. Is when you can't. You're, you're like you don't care about what's in front of you, and so I said, go ahead and turn the thermostat off. Go ahead and turn it off now because. Their, their thought, they, br they bring up the weather and they see the same data as me. Like, you got to understand, like, this is how people actually work. They will look at the same data and come with a completely different conclusion. So we're looking at the weather and it's like, look, every day has a high of 70 degrees. And I look, every single day has a low of 35. Or 30. Yeah. So I'm not trying to heat my house and make it really warm at 70 degrees in the, the afternoon, but I sure as hell am trying to bridge that gap. I said, what do you think the average temperature is? Because the average temperature is probably 50 degrees. Well, if our thermostat is at 66 and the average temperature is 50, that means the thermostat is going to be on primarily. It may not at the peak of the day or just like an hour or two after that because it's it's there, but then it'll be on the rest of the time. So I said, turn it off because you're clearly right and I'm wrong. Turn it off. You think that the house is going to heat up in the middle of the day, but the, the, the reason why I... I I, I bring this up literally they have no the people because this is a microcosm of everywhere out there they have so much comfort they have no connection with reality and if the moment that that thing goes off like that safety blanket which is that which is that thing because what it is is it is the thing that is keeping it is it is all of their mistakes all of their laziness are pepper or papered over with those safety nets. And that is one of those safety nets, which is the thermostat. So it's a game and that's all it is to them is a game to like keep the the thermostat above 66 um, so that it doesn't come off. And there's no penalties if you do because it just, it, the heat will turn on and it will stay at 66 and it'll be comfortable. It will always be comfortable regardless of what you do. That is how all of society is operating right now. All of them. Every single person is operating like that right now. And so when you pull those safety nets, which is some of the ones that we started to see, you're going to get massive real problems and you're going to get shaked. And as much as some of the people got, they got 
shooken up a little bit here, but they have not actually been shooken up. Yeah. They have. I, I don't know when I came to this understanding, but it was like eight years ago about the nature of how people are interacting in their daily lives. And I go, you're totally unprepared for the actual real world. And when the real world comes to smack you, you're going to have no chance. Yeah. You don't have a habit. You don't have a bone. You don't have experience. And you are without a prayer. Well, that's in the same vein of without a vision, people perish. It's the it same is. vein. It is. Without a big picture, without getting a hold of this yes. that we're talking about and that we've been talking about for weeks, you perish. You 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 dissolve. I like the word dissolve. Dissolve's good. You dissolve because because nothing's holding you together anymore. You've got no real glue to the things that are in your life. It, it just begins to dissipate. No, and then it turns into because I turn to this person, and you say this all the time. Do you write in your own eyes? That is what it is. And one could one could critique me for doing the same thing, and that's fine. But the, it tur it turned into a. Okay, you have one opinion. I have a different opinion. So which one's correct? Which one should we actually listen to? Because you're super dog-headed about it. And I guess in, in theory, I could be inverse to that. Well, I want to say something about that because you just brought up something that happened to Moses. Okay, yeah. When, uh, I believe it was Dathan, they're getting up there and saying, hey, why should we listen to you? I can hear and say what we got to do too. Oh, yeah. And what happened was... He got, he got uh, some 20,000 followers were killed. What happened was, it was not that he didn't, that you didn't have any quality with me. You know, like you said, well, that's your opinion. This is my opinion. Who's right? Yeah. I'll tell you who's right. This, this is going to get me alienated. But there are certain people that are anointed to be leaders. Yeah. That's, and that's, you're not anointed to be the leader. You can have your opinion. It's okay. Have your opinion. But sooner or later, in the picture, you're going to understand there's one that's holding up the flag saying, this is where we're going. Yes. And somehow you got to get behind that. Like it or not. And this is where people fall a lot of times. Uh, I've had so many people in my, in mm. my experience say, I'm going my own way. I don't need you. Goodbye. Okay. And then you watch them months later, they're dissipating they're falling off they're perishing they're dissolving wow what happened i had the same thing that i had the you know the vision i had the idea where i wanted to go this way and that one well the trouble is is that there are one there are leaders who are anointed and called into their gifting i don't want to get into this because there's a whole lot of teaching about gifting there's certain people that don't have the gifting and so people follow people without get like uh, I hate to say this, but politically it happens all the time. People following people that have no compass whatsoever. They just, whatever feels good, touchy-feely, it feels good. It won't hurt anybody. It won't upset anybody. We're going that way. Well, it's because it meshes with their own. Because it's the, nicer. It, it meshes with their own personality because that's way, the way they view things. They view that, yeah, you should do it based on your feelings. Yeah. And that's a very, that's a very dangerous perspective. But you got to decide... Yes, they're a human being. Yes, they have a right to their opinion. But you got to decide who's the leader here. Uh, I, the song just gave to me. Who's the leader of the club that made for you and me? M I C K E Y. You yeah. know, there's some Mickey that we should be listening to. Anointed leadership. Someone is is going out front and saying this is what. Here, we're, here's an, here's another way to put. I think the way that you said because I I've thought about this similar. I don't like saying that, but I I do know what you're saying. I do know what you're saying. The way I try to flesh that out in like a structure would be like, who, I'm trying to remember if I wrote this in my book. It, this is to me like the easiest way to sneakily become the leader. To become the <laughs> leader when you're not the leader and, and genuinely become the leader is when you've decided that you care about the entirety of the thing that's there in its entirety. Once you make that decision, weird things start to happen because you'll start to get in certain kind of conversations you weren't getting into. You'll bring up certain kind of perspectives that you would not That's normally right. have brought up. So, for example, if you're in your job and like, for example, this started for me when I, I was hired as a maybe a senior software engineer. And that doesn't mean I'm the top. What senior means is I'm not a junior software engineer. So that's what I was hired for. And I decided I'm going to care about the entire project. I'm going to care at least as much as I possibly can. The vision of like as far as I can see, I'm going to care about the overall success. Not necessarily in the details, but that I want the success. So I become the advocate 
of the entirety of the thing. And once you do that, now your words are different because your words are about, I'm not caring about my opinion. I don't care about my opinion. Like somebody asked me the other day, you know, we're talking about the, the church TM type stuff at Bible study. And somebody asked me, what mu music would you prefer? I'm like, I don't prefer any music. That's not what this is about. That's what you're doing. I'm not preferring. I'm talking about this big thing, this big thing, because we're trying to go to this thing. And once you have that kind of perspective, all of a sudden your arguments start to win and they don't even have to be good arguments. Mm -hmm. So back to this person, the reason why I won that argument was because my concerns were not about what today's weather is or what my feel about it. What's it's what's about the color of the rug though. What? It's about where are we going and are we on the path to doing that or aren't we? Yep. And I, I believe, I believe just based on my actions, whether or not it's actually happening, I, I think it is. I believe that the arguments will then prevail because there'll be certain kinds of arguments they had never considered. You know, you're right. They don't have that behavior and they probably should have that behavior. Yeah. Of course, that's the whole point is to do that. We're building this system. We're moving in this way. That way we have the, um, for example, the, um, we have earned the ability to be, for example, off grid and comfortable. You don't get that for free. That comes from discipline and that comes from an understanding and responsibility about the world. And that is a way more powerful argument than just what I feel, what I think, what I like, what what flippant thing at any moment, what I believe maybe will be the case. That's just it's a very weak argument. Yeah, and and I think I think we're getting close to the end here, but I, I think we need to to say that's why we're saying catch the vision. That's why we're saying see the big picture. Yeah. That's why we're saying because well, <laughs> You can build your own little church, little country church on the edge of town that nobody knows about. Yeah. That's really great. With the same paradigm of method, that's really great. But there's more. There's more to understand. There's more to see. And that's what we're trying to convey. Uh, and uh, aspects of leadership is one thing that's great. I like to talk about it. But I, there, I hope to get a chance one day to teach on what's more once we get a hold of this and and know we need these leadership with these qualities that are going after the vision, there's more. There's more. And I can tell you what the yeah. more is because I've been there. Okay. What What is some more? Tell, tell us a, couple, a, little, a little more. Well, Cole, the only trouble is... Because you piqued my interest. The, we'll have to do it next week. <laughs> John. <laughs> the only trouble is, is with the more, when I share the more, um, it's very... How do I want to say this? It's it's it has to come by development. I can tell yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, can yeah, teach yeah, it, yeah. but you got to catch it. And that's the difficulty of being a leader too is being in a position of 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 action and teaching where people can hear it and go, "I see it." And then they can get going. Well, and they say they say that's that is the skill of being a good communicator. Yeah, and that's my that's my forte or thing that I've been called to, as far as I'm concerned. And I oh, can do that. We can t spend the time, and I can talk all about the more. But we're not even at the place to be more, or enjoy more yet. We need someone to stand up like we're doing and saying, "Look, this paradigm that we're living under is not enough." Yeah, is not enough. It's not enough, and we got to go on. We got to go farther, deeper, whatever the word is, deeper, farther. Higher, <laughs> you know, I, I do kind of wonder if that's a, a more uh, compelling argument, anyways. Um, that if you were to be, let's say, critical of something like, like, let's say, a church, that maybe instead of saying those things, saying, focusing on the, the more, and then, then you'll inevitably have to fight off. The people going, oh, we can't do that because we do all this other stuff. I mean, it's it's a different way of going about it, saying we shouldn't do all this other stuff because we should do this. Maybe it's we should do this, and maybe we need to remove that. Well, some people say that if you have the carrot before the horse on the moor, they'll go toward the carrot. It's not always true. But <laughs> We talked about that. You even brought this up yourself. We yeah, talked you about... That how some people need to be motivated on that on that podcast. That was a, that was a really good one. Yeah, yeah. And you brought up that some people they need they need a fire. 
Yeah, and they need to hear need some of this truth and hear what God is saying in his word and hear these principles in order to see it. You can't see without hearing. I'm sorry. Try it. Go yeah, ahead. It's such a good argument. You have to hear it and then go, you know what? I see it. I perceive with my eyes now what you're saying to me. And once you get it, you can't unsee it. You can't yeah. say, no, I didn't see that. Yes, you did. And you need to move on. Revelation is amazing. Yeah, I would definitely say I'll encourage you guys to see how zombie everybody is around you. Because <laughs> once you, once you, that movie, I'm not even seeing that movie, They Live. It's from like the 80s. Oh, it's they Rings live. of it, Bell. Yeah. It's, a, it, it's, it's, it's one of these cult classic movies. And what it is is, I, I, I can't remember the exact beginning, but this guy, the, the protagonist, finds these special glasses and, oh, yes. and the glasses show who's an alien, who's not. And then you find out the paradigm. Oh, my goodness. Half the people on Earth are, are aliens. <laughs> and so it's like once you put that those glasses on and you start to see how much people are on autopilot, it's like, whoa. That's why I believe that the uh, the meme, the NPC meme, has taken off so intensely. And I, I want to caution you and me. Uh, sometimes when I put the glasses on and realize how many zombies there are out there, you, I start to get ticked off. And I yes. can't, I can't allow, I can't allow myself to get ticked off because yeah. I was a zombie too. Yeah, you know. Well, and and also the to the point, your last thing there, it, it is the natural, inevitable reality that that people are scattered sheep that are sheep that are going all around, and that's, that's the, a good that is the natural calling for leadership. So, it is true that you're, you know, you put the the leadership glasses on. And you're like, oh my gosh, the sheep are all over the place. <laughs> yes, that is. And and what they're doing is they're doing this or they're doing that. And you freak out because you would get mad. Like, why aren't they doing what they're supposed to do? Well, it's just, I don't know. It's the way it works. Well, it's, it's, And so that is the call. It's the thing we're working on. Yeah. So, all right. So that's our time. Um, we do this every single Saturday, 8 a.m., and uh, we've been, dude, we've been going strong, which is great. We're, 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 we're uh, got a tiger by the tail, basically. Got the tiger <laughs> by the tail. And then um, we definitely want to hear your comments. I need, we need to start talking about this at the very beginning of the podcast and definitely encouraging people that when they see this, make a comment, at least say, hey, what's up? Uh, you know, at minimum, uh, if you like something, definitely, definitely call it out. Tell tell us what it is. Um, yeah. we, we're interested in those kind of comments. We need to definitely kind of remember at the very beginning. We're looking for them. We're too. looking for them just because what we want they help us. What we'd really like to do is actually get into the point where we do a podcast where we could actually potentially talk to people live. Li yeah, on they the, can type something. Yeah, yeah. on here. Um, but if not that, then, you know, just messaging us, uh, you might see this on YouTube or on Facebook yeah. and, uh, send a comment there. We're always interested in, uh, in hearing them, you know, whether it's, you know, you like something or you don't like something or you have a story, you know, we'd love to share a story on, on air. That'd be cool. Um, and so that's pretty much about it. We go after we record this live, we then go back change some things. Sometimes I change the color, make sure it looks nicer and yeah. clean up the front side and, and, you know, maybe put a new intro on it. And we do that kind of stuff. And then we slap it out on YouTube. Uh, and I've started putting like thumbnails together where, you know, I'm able to cut all the background around John and he's doing you know, some weird, <laughs> some weird pose and, you know, saying some things like the last one. Um, I guess you, you need to get on my YouTube so you can see it. Cause then you get to see the pictures. Yeah. My last one, um, I titled, uh, Elon Musk with a telescope. Yeah. And people are like, that was what? a good thing. I was just sharing that with another person the other day. I said, you know, the poor guy doesn't have a microscope. If he had a microscope, he might be a little more well-rounded, but he's so telescopic. Yeah. He's, he's way out in the universe, uh, <laughs> which is kind of where he wants to be anyways. That's where he wants to be. So, um, all right, we'll see you next time. That's Thank Catch you. Vision.